Hi, and we're back. Um, we're doing um, uh, the next chapter, chapter two. Uh, you're probably here uh, because you found these links on the side. As I add lecture and additional resources, I add things over here. Um, and the opening of this chapter, not unlike the first chapter, isn't extremely relevant to psychopharmacology but it's certainly extremely relevant to the content of this chapter. It's about a young woman who develops multiple sclerosis, which is a real bad one. Uh, I had to watch one of uh, the faculty at UCLA slowly die of this uh, when I was at the end of my time there. Um, I sure as heck hope that we can learn how to deal with this and drugs will be important, I'm certain, uh, but it's it's not so psycho uh i have facebook open and because messages keep coming in i actually had to restart this lecture i just want to show you why i have facebook open and then i can close it uh greg dunn design this guy is amazing uh we'll be looking at some neurons in this chapter uh shortly and you'll know that one of my personal heroes was Ramon E. Cajal. Uh, this is not something that Cajal did, <clears throat> but it is in his style, as we'll see. Uh, these are Golgi stained neurons, and you should be able to recognize them by sight after this chapter. Uh, these are pyramidal cells, because if you look down here at the cell body or soma, here, 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 and here, it has a pyramidal shape. So it has an apical dendrite that goes straight up. This is in the cerebral cortex and basal dendrites uh, down here. And I forget what I paid for this. It's still in the tube because I'm too lazy to go get it uh, framed. Uh, this is his website, uh, Greg Dunn Design. This which is his current picture. I have a reproduction of that. Um, it's sitting right next to me in the living room. These are also uh, pyramidal neurons, and you can see the pyramidal shapes and the apical dendrite and the basal uh, dendrites. Uh, he is just stunning in terms of uh, what he produces. If you're ever in Philadelphia, uh, you can see uh, some of his stuff, I would definitely uh, go look at it. Uh, the, the Society for Neuroscience uh, has him do a lot of work uh, for them. Okay, uh, so now we're safe from messages. Uh, okay, and I want to go to the homepage for the course. It should be here somewhere, Drugs and Behavior. And I put redundant links uh, for the syllabus lecture and resources in chapter one, lecture and resources, um, because it's important for you to recognize how complex individual cells are. It's stunning. Uh, we usually draw them as little flat pancakes with circles and squiggles in them. Uh, but boy, they are way more alive than that. So if you look at the syllabus or, or, or chapter one, uh, you'll see that I've added uh, two video links, uh, which we won't sit through today. And I'm not going to test on these, so it's up to you whether you watch them. But I just want to give you a, a teaser of how beautiful this is and how complex a neuron is. So you, this takes you to this page. And by the way, this little guy here is carrying a vesicle down a microtubule. It is stunning. And this isn't made up. This is cutting edge understanding, except for the colors, of course, of how the nervous system um, or the cells in the body works. This is not focused on neurons, but neurons are just, you know, a cell, special cell. Um, so let's just look at this for a second. The music is. I, 
that's a blood vessel. That's the bilipid membrane floating up top there. Oh my God. I, I often open my classes by putting this on repeat and just playing it over and over. I am such a nerd. Uh, the second one, uh, and again, you're not responsible for these. This one talks you through it. While red blood cells are carried away at high velocity by a strong blood flow, leukocytes roll slowly on endothelial cells. E-selectins on endothelial cells interact with PSGL1, a glycoprotein on leukocyte microvilli. Leukocytes... Again, there's going to be a lot of terms in here. If you think you're going to be tested on it, uh, you probably stick a pencil in your eye. You're not. I, I just want you to appreciate the complexity of a single cell. Uh, so let's get rid of that. Okay. So uh, yeah, here's the chapter one lecture. And here we go uh, into chapter two. Okay, depressing story about multiple sclerosis. Cells of the nervous system. Uh, we will focus on neurons, but I'll tell you that glial cells are be, we're, we're recognizing that they are more and more and more in, important. And the microbiome of your gut is important. And inflammation in the brain is important. Now, down below, um, we have several sets cell types, uh, bipolar, because it's got two poles. This one also has two poles. It's called a ganglion cell. So these are all receptors up on top, but these two here are the ones uh, that I wanted uh, to uh, draw your attention to because certainly the pyramidal cell will show up uh, later uh, in the course, both in relation to um, the cerebral cortex and the hippocampus. Uh, which is uh, very important for memory and learning and stuff. Um, and there's the pyramidal cell body. I think he's got too much action, or the, the artist here has a little bit too much action going down here. It's distracting. Uh, I'll show you some more live ones in a second. Uh, this is a Purkinje cell. And uh, notice pyramidal is not capitalized because it's a pyramid, because it looks like a pyramid, uh, and it's not um, uh, capitalized. Uh, Purkinje is capitalized because that's uh, a human being, uh, was a human being, and uh, he got his name stuck on several things. What's amazing about this is that this incredibly intricate dendritic field, dendrites, um, is, is if you hold up your hand and look at your fingers, the palm side of your hand, you can see all your fingers. But if you turn your hand 45 degrees, suddenly you can only see your thumb and uh, index finger. Uh, that's the way Purkinje cells are. Um, they are basically two-dimensional. And it's been estimated that one of these cells, one of these cells, has about 100,000 synapses on it. An astonishing number. More humans than currently live in the city of Scranton. Um, and later we'll be looking at uh, spines, which is where um, neurons often talk to other neurons. Uh, it's just, it blows me away. So let's look at, I, I've done some searches. Here's a search for uh, pyramidal cell. I added Golgi uh, to make it uh, uh, show the Golgi stains. 
Uh, this is very cool. On the left, there's a cluster of three uh, pyramidal cells. You can see the pyramids very clearly. On the right, uh, there's a cell that doesn't look like a pyramid, and it's not a pyramidal cell. Um, th the function of neurons uh, follows with their structure. So by studying the structure of the nervous system, Cajal, over 100 years ago, did beautiful, beautiful work and uh, hand drew a lot of this stuff. And we still reference his work. And he, uh, he won the Nobel Prize. He, he shared it with Golgi. I'm not a fan of Golgi. Uh, but uh, form and function do go together. Ooh, what's this one? Ooh, so pretty. Those look like cows. Um, and they're talking about dendritic spines. Oh, there they are on the right. I, I didn't catch it. So there's a no doubt a drawing from Cajal here. And this is, you know, when Cajal was doing his stuff, you couldn't really take very good pictures uh, with photography back then. But now we can. Look at all these, dend these dendritic spines. It's just amazing. Oh, look, my living room. Um, that's, that's from Dunn. Artist Greg Dunn, uh, what a guy. Um, okay, and then I also searched for Perkinji, and here we go. Uh, so there's per Perkinji, and by the way, notice this Perkinji, oh, I didn't mean to click. Uh, notice the morphology with this branching. So here, here's the cell body, here's the two-dimensional dendritic field, a hundred thousand synapses may be in there. Um, but if you look at your book's figure, you're going to see that the artist in your book basically uh, took it from this figure. Uh, it's, it's remarkably similar. And, well, we saw the sp spines. And your book, by the way, does a very good uh, job of showing spines. So uh, let me close that. And let me close. Ooh. Oh, uh, let me say this about that. This is, notice the stamp, which I can't put my uh, uh, cursor over. Uh, that means this is really a Cajal. And the library where his uh, stuff is stored, they paid somebody who was a good librarian but didn't understand neuroanatomy to catalog all of his plates. And the guy took out, or, or the woman, but probably a guy, took out uh, a rubber stamp and stamped on uh, these priceless prints uh, that, that, uh, uh, that characteristic now in indicator of where it comes uh, from the Madrid Library and the number of the uh, print. Uh, they must have gone crazy when that first happened. Okay. Uh, and there's my my hero, Ramon E. Cajal. I'm afraid to do... Oh, I have a drawing thing turned on now. So there we go. Oh, that's, that's elegant. Um, so uh, he's my hero. I'm not a big fan of uh, 